Hey everybody, how's it going? We're back and we're working on the Border Collie versus Yellow Lab image classification challenge. This is not sanctioned by anybody and you will not find any code to help you with this on the internet. So welcome back. Uh, we did run our training uh, validation data for 30 epics and you can see here the best we ever got on our validation set. I think it was 0.915 yeah, 0.9. I don't know. It was around 90%. We didn't get any better. We did start to overfit, however, as we were learning very quickly all the features of our very small data set. That happens with neural networks. They can do well on small data sets, provided that the labels are sufficiently distinct. What does that mean, Mr. Jargon? It just means that a border collie don't look like a Labrador, man. Okay but it will overfit. But you know, hey, nine out of 10 ain't bad. That got me into state college, so there you go. Um, now we're gonna see like, okay, we've got a model. The whole point of a model is not just to say, oh, here's my validation accuracy, whoop de doo We gotta do something with it, right? So we gotta make some predictions. And since we don't really have a test set, and a test set is kind of like a validation set that you hopefully don't know anything about and don't even have labels for somebody else has the labels for that and that's how it works in a machine learning competition anyway but we're still going to use our validation set keep in mind the model did not train on the validation set it only uses the validation set to take the training data that it's learning on and seeing if it's doing any good so hope you understand that so what i'm going to do down here i'm going to get matplotlib in Conda, it should already be installed. If you're trying to do this for, via PIP, you're going to start throwing things at the wall. Just use Conda. So I'm going to re-instantiate the validation generator. I'm not going to augment anything. Test data gen is that image data generator that just rescales it across the RGB spectrum. And we're looking in Kali Labrador Valid. We're doing a target size 150 by 150. We're going to do a batch size of one. We're not shuffling anything want everything to be in the order that it was found it's binary mode so we call model dot predict generator we were using fit generator earlier if you recall we pass the generator which is called validation generator that we defined right here and steps is going to be 195 why is it going to be 195 because we have 195 images in our validation set which belong to two different types of dogs so we call it 195 times. That's an easy way for me to say, oh, I'm gonna get a prediction for all my images. So now that we have this validation generator, I just wanted to show you something. So and this is why you should use Jupyter Notebook because when you hit dot and tab, you get a lot of really cool hints about what methods and what attributes these classes have. So. And some important ones, class indices, Kali is a zero, lab is a one. Another one is classes, and this will just return. So it got them in order, right? It got all the zeros, it got all the ones. And if you wanted to see just how many, you could do that. It's a handy uh, NumPy method there, 101, 94. So, you know, pretty balanced there. And that's just like a value count thing. The other thing we're using above is the file names. So what if we wanted to start plotting these? Well, here's a list of file names. That's kind of cool. So above here, I, I cobbled together some terrible code to at least get this working so we can look at Jupyter Notebook here and start looking at some of the file names. So uh, one thing to point out, I did import something, which you'll need to also import from Keras pre-processing import image and this gives you I think it's a instance of pillow or PIL which is a popular Python image handling library so basically what we're doing here is you need to you, uh, image can load an image and it wants to load it from a reference to a file path so I'm feeding it in my current directory plus the directory that the Kali Labrador validation set is stored in plus the, uh, you know, the file name. And the file name just has the, the path to Kali or Labrador and the hash that was determined in the Google Images download script. 
So this is just one image. We could look at it and say image, and that is a border collie, and that's cool. But really, let's turn this into a function so we can reuse it. I'm just going to call it load an image, and I'm going to pass it a, uh, a file name. And usually when you have a one-off thing working, just wrap it in a function, start to indent it and say, okay, well, that's the argument that I need to uh, substitute here. I, here's what I had hard-coded in here, but I could just call that a file name, and I can return an image. So let's save that, and let's actually try it out. So load an image. And uh, well, I have my validation generator uh, file names, and I'm going to load the first one. And there it is. So we can see the second one, the third one. I don't think it's going to take, uh, notice you can't pass many in at once. It's, it's loading just one. But so let's say, for instance, uh, we wanted to see, well, one thing that you need to think about is how do you know in aggregate how your predictions were? So we've got this idea of a confusion matrix, right? So scikit-learn, that should be working for you if you're using Conda. If not, have fun on Stack Overflow for the next 12 hours, and I'll never see you again. But yeah, so we're importing confusion matrix from sklearn.metrics. And the confusion matrix here is simple. Why did I comment that out? I don't know. I just wanted to hit question mark. So a confusion matrix, it takes the true labels and your predictions, and it returns this grid. So what are our true labels? Our true labels are valid generator dot classes. That's just a list of ones and zeros. And our predictions are just preds, right? So that's not going to work. So let's look at preds. We know our true value. All right. So the true data, we know it's just a bunch of ones and zeros. But what's happening here is that these are in, uh, they're not ones or zeros. They're exponent, exponential notation, scientific notation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a list comprehension. I'm going to say NP round X for X in Preds. So this should like bring these uh, back to like a one or a zero. And then we can say, okay, now we have our confusion matrix. So the confusion matrix just basically says, and let me get my class, uh, let me get the class uh, indices here class indices, right? So basically it should be of the 92 plus nine collies we had, 92 of them were a collie and we predicted that correctly. And nine though we predicted was a lab. On the lab side, we had 13, which we predicted were collies, 81, which we predicted were labs. So that kind of gives you a sense for, you know, how accurate are you within each class? Is one class benefiting more or less? In this case, it looks kind of random to me. If you look at the off diagonal, like the 913, those are pretty close. I would almost pay more attention to those than these, especially since we had, uh, I think, more of one thing. Yeah, we had slightly more collies. So net on net, I don't think that really matters. But um, yeah, so that's how you can plot an image in Jupyter Notebook. That's how you can look at the, uh, the validation generator class indices. And I'm trying to think if there's any other useful code I can show you before I move on to, you know, how do we get past 90% accuracy? Well, yeah, the confusion matrix kind of takes care of that. I mean, 
Yeah, I don't know. Why don't we look at some photos that we identified incorrectly? So maybe um, let's take a look at, let's try this. Let's zip our validation generator class. Well, let's take a look at that real quick. Let's find some things we predicted poorly. So these are, this is our truth. That's going to be true. And then we have our, our predictions. So I want to zip those up, meaning I want to combine them. And in Python 3 here, that's going to return a zip iterator. So I'm just going to create, a, I'm not going to create a dictionary because <laughs> that's going to uh, not work out well because we're going to have a lot of duplicate keys. But we can create a list with it. And we can say, we know this is the right one, but this is our prediction. So if the one on the left is not equal to the one on the right, well, then we have a problem. So let me just call this uh, NP round X. I don't really want it to be an array. Can I just grab the zeroth element? There we go. And maybe I can set it as an integer just to deal with. Uh, there we go. So now what I want to do is essentially say, I want to see where the values are not the same, right? If the values are not the same, then I want to understand what index it occurred at. So I'm going to say for index, uh, whatever, in enumerate, and this is getting a little long-winded now but and this is not Pythonic really but it'll be okay so let's just print index and underscore just to make sure it's working right so I'm gonna say if well this is really a pair this is a pair so it's not just a an, an empty variable. I'm going to say if um, if pair zero not equal to pair one, and I'm referring to the 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 it's a tuple, right? So pair is a tuple, and I'm kind of unpacking it um, crudely. Not equal to pair one, uh, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to say bad indices bad indices equals a list and then we're gonna keep track of the bad indices we're gonna say bad indices append index so now we're gonna look at our bad indices and these are gonna be the indices for the images that we did not correctly classify so why don't we just take a look at them and see if maybe these dogs are like a little weird so let me see if this will work bad indices let's go down to a new cell load image file names ah, let's just try one nine that looks like a border collie to me that's definitely a collie, but you might notice that the way the image was set up, it's kind of stout. Maybe it looks more like a lab. 19. Yeah, that was that dog that definitely not a collie. Um, let's see, 26. Yeah, those are puppies. They look a little bit like labs, though, to me, to be honest. Let's take a look at 63. Yeah, it looks like a collie. Let's see some of the, the mischaracterized Labradors. 159. I don't know why I thought that was a collie, but hey, 161. Yeah, that's tough. It's kind of a puppy, and there are lots of puppies. So, yeah, I mean, I hopefully this was kind of useful for Ray and for Ray for you into taking the the model and actually munging some data with it, taking a look at what's actually happening, loading up some images, and realizing that a lot of the stuff in machine learning and deep learning is writing garbage code like this.
that is probably not scalable, not reproducible, but it'll get you through the immediate project that you're working on and you'll go copy and paste and modify in the future. So in the next video, you know, we're going to start ramping up and trying to get that 95% validation accuracy through more sophisticated means. And uh, I'll leave you with a bunch of puppies.